Evening ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while since I've done a video. Anyway, I thought we'd have a look at the latest build of Open Indiana. As some of you might be aware, there was a, a project called Open Solaris. Open Solaris. And recently it became end of life, discontinued. And now there is a community version of uh, Open Solaris called Open Indiana. Uh, latest information about this you can find on DistroWatch as well as OpenIndiana.org and we have some information on Wikipedia and if you're interested in what the project originally came from, the Open Solaris project, you can have a look at Wikipedia as well. I've got it running in a virtual machine which I'll just bring into full screen mode now and it seems to be a fairly traditional uh, GNOME environment except it runs a theme called the Nimbus theme you can just see that in a second what you might notice about Open Indiana is unlike GNU slash Linux running in 512 mega RAM like I am at the moment it doesn't really it's not as responsive as a typical GNU slash Linux system or a free BSD system. We can see the themes that we've got available here, Dark Nimbus and Nimbus. I have the default Nimbus enabled. We can take a look and see it's got some interesting uh, applications, some in interesting choices. For example, on a typical GNOME uh, install you'd, you wouldn't have Thunderbird. Instead you would most likely have um, Evolution, which is written by Novell and the community. Going through here you can see some fairly standard uh, applications. You can notice that the Nimbus theme comes across very prettily. Um, different icons look a lot better than their typical GNOME counterparts in my opinion. We have Firefox which is a typical player. Pigeon these days is replaced by Empathy. Looking at the version of GNOME we can see that it's actually 2.30 when it decides to come up as I said it's you know 2.30.2 .2. going through we can see that there's actually it's surprising it's about an 800 megabyte download maybe 850 megabyte download it doesn't actually have a full office suite unlike a new slash Linux system the boot is quite slow um, which is surprising you know, considering it doesn't have a lot really here um, administration wise it seems to have a few GUI tools there for administration notably the package manager and we have the typical players here for settings uh, NVIDIA, I'm not using NVIDIA at the moment, I'm running in VirtualBox as you would have noticed so therefore no NVIDIA but yeah it seems to be a typical uh, environment you can see here if we go into the command line you'll notice that things are a little bit different it's called Open Indiana of course do you name dash a and we find out that it's actually a sun operating system uh, a sun based operating system OI 148 so I updated the Wikipedia page today to uh, show that it's not 147 it's 148 now if we go to the CD slash uh, device I'm not going to really show you too much um, intelligent too much that's intelligent but you can see things are a little bit a little bit different here I mean, TTY is named a little bit differently um, I've noticed before that they actually call um, uh, logical devices pools. Uh, I hope that's the right terminology that I'm using there, but essentially hard drives are or partitions on hard drives are pools, so which is not something that I'm too familiar with. I'm used to SDA1, SDA2, SDB1, SDB2. Um, on the BSD, we've got the AD0 and all, all that sort of stuff and the slices and, and, and that, but this is a little bit different. Um, so uh, going into the package manager, we'll have a quick look at the package manager. I actually should note that um, the package manager wasn't all too quick either. I thought it would be a lot quicker uh, than in previous versions, but I was a little bit mistaken here. So we'll just log into the package manager. Might take a couple of seconds. You can notice that I've installed the VBox editions. Uh, the reason for that is so that I can get a full screen display. Uh, I tried to find it in the package manager, no such luck. 
Uh, that's how I typically do it uh, in a uh, GNU slash Linux, such as um, uh, Ubuntu. I'd uh, grab those um, VBox editions through the package manager, uh, aptitude on or apt-get on that system, and do it that way, or Debian aptitude. So, um, what we have here, uh, you take a look at the total number of applications which are available, which is 856. Now, bear in mind, it's a new project um, forked off the old Open Solaris project, and so there are a limited number of applications. There are always a limited, a very limited number of applications on Open Solaris. We can only hope that uh, applications get ported to this platform in the future. In the interest of competition, everyone likes uh, everyone in the free and open source community seems to like BSD or GNU slash Linux, but it would be interesting to see another player in there. Um, it's pretty much a click and you know, click and point and click type affair. The whole refresh repositories, uh, get your updates. I mean, you guys, uh, I don't need to sort of I think explain it any further than I have. Anyway, this is just a, a video to intro introduce you guys to this um, preview. Essentially, it's not really a review. Um, in saying so, uh, given given that we're not really at the moment getting anything above and beyond a GNU slash Linux system. I mean, we've got a couple of things over here. I probably should have. Uh, I'm having a few bit, a few technical problems with the mouse. I've noticed this in VirtualBox lately. Uh, sometimes you get a few technical glitches with the mouse. Anyway, if you look up in the upper um, uh, right-hand corner, we can see we've got a different network manager and, and that sort of thing. I mean, you can't really tell from the icon, but, uh, you know, if you install this, you'll notice it's a different network manager to that one that we're normally used to. Overall, I'd probably give this probably 3 out of 5. It seems to be stable. It's a bit slow on boot and to execute programs. It's not seemingly making great use of the RAM. Um, but that's probably a really, I'm saying so, uh, it's really a qualitative statement rather than a quantifying. I haven't really quantified how much RAM it's using or that, but it just it seems a little bit slug, sluggish at the present, which from my previous installs with Open Solaris is pretty typical. But anyway, guys, uh, I suggest you go to DistroWatch, get your links, download it through the torrents. Hey, guys, just remember Open Indian is a new project. We don't want to drain their resources. Use a torrent if you can, use a mirror, something like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little pre preview and uh, that you gain something from it. See you next time, guys. I'll probably have some command line action pretty shortly. I've been thinking of uh, brewing up a few things for you guys. Anyway, enjoy. Catch you later, YouTubers. <laughs>